This is Jill Pack with the Seasons of Joy podcast, and it's episode number 71, entitled Our Two Brains. Are you a woman of faith who is struggling to navigate your current season of life? Do you feel like life is just happening to you instead of for you? My name is Jill Pack. I'm a certified life coach and a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I want you to know that no matter your season or circumstance, it is possible to create a more joyful life. And I would love to show you how. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, friends. Welcome to today's episode of the Seasons of Joy podcast. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you of my upcoming retreat. An awakening retreat will be held October 5th through 7th in Garden City, Utah, near the beautiful Bear Lake. This is the perfect opportunity to refocus on what is important to you. It's an opportunity to reconnect with yourself, with others, and with God, and an opportunity to rejuvenate yourself so that you can step back into your life with confidence. Please be sure to click on the link in the show notes to get on the interest list so you can get more information as it becomes available. Now on to this week's episode, where we will explore the intricacies of the human brain, specifically our two brains, the higher brain and the lower brain. So first, let's define the terms, the lower brain. What is that? Well, it's also known as the reptilian brain, the toddler brain, the caveman brain, or the primitive brain. And it is responsible for our instinctual behavior, such as breathing, heart rate, fight or flight response, and basic basic survival responses. The higher brain, on the other hand, is responsible for more complex cognitive processes, such as creativity, imagination, reasoning, decision-making, and problem-solving. The higher brain and the lower brain functions are interconnected, and they work 24-7 together to regulate our behavior and our emotions. The lower brain functions provide the foundation for our survival, while the higher brain functions help us thrive in our environment. I'm going to refer to the lower brain as the toddler brain. I have a three-year-old, almost four-year-old granddaughter, so it's going to be easy for me to use this analogy. The three functions of the toddler brain all are there to keep us safe. The brain's job is to avoid danger or pain to seek pleasure, and to conserve energy, all in an effort to keep us alive. Now, the lower brain functions can sometimes overpower the higher brain functions. This is why we may experience irrational fear or anger in certain situations, even if there is no real danger present. The lower brain doesn't know the difference between real or perceived danger. It's also why it can be difficult to make rational decisions when we are in a state of heightened emotion. So I want you to think of a toddler that you know. And when they're hangry or tired, what do they do? A lot of times they have what we call a meltdown, right? Because they want that food and it feels dangerous to them if they don't get it. Their ability to reason isn't developed like yours or mine. Now think of that same toddler when they want a toy or a treat at the grocery store and they don't get it. What do they do? Again, they may have a meltdown, right? Their ability to reason is lacking. Their brain is trying to keep them safe by seeking this pleasure. Now think of that same toddler again as you're trying to potty train them. When they're playing outside, they don't often want to come inside the house to use the bathroom because it seems too hard, right? So they end up staying outside too long and they end up peeing their pants. And they don't see that wetting themselves is actually harder for them. They're just concerned about the current moment, the right now. That feels safer to them. And again, this is what our lower brains do when we are in survival mode. It's avoiding danger or pain, it's seeking pleasure, and it's wanting to conserve energy all in an effort to keep us safe. Now, in order to maintain a healthy balance between the higher and lower brain functions, it's important to practice mindfulness and self-awareness. 
This means paying attention to what we're thinking and how we're feeling, and then learning how to regulate them in a healthy way. It also means engaging in activities that stimulate our higher brain functions, such as reading, problem solving, and creative pursuits. As humans, we actually have the ability to think about our own thinking processes. Isn't that amazing? This is referred to as metacognition. It's the ability to monitor and control one's own thoughts and cognitive processes, which can be useful in a lot of different situations. This includes being aware of one's own strengths and weaknesses, as well as understanding how to approach different types of problems or tasks. Metacognition can also involve planning, monitoring, evaluating one's own learning strategies. This can all be helpful, very useful in academic and professional settings. And so ultimately, strong Developing a strong metacognitive skills can help us become more effective learners and problem solvers. Now, as a certified life coach, I work with my clients on that very thing, helping them to become aware of their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, and what they are creating for themselves because of those things. Awareness is the first steps to change. If we don't understand that we have the power to change, We live in a life of autopilot instead of from the driver's seat. It begins with becoming a compassionate observer. What actions or behaviors are you fueling because of the thoughts and feelings you're choosing? How does what you are experiencing tie back to what you're thinking? Can you see how it's possible that you are actually creating your overall experience because of those thoughts and feelings? The truth is all problems are thought problems, especially when they're stuck in our head. So the first step to solving any problem is to look at what we are thinking and feeling, recognizing when we are operating from our toddler brain or our higher brain. However, there's something very important that I want you to remember. This exercise needs to be coupled with self-love, self-compassion, and self-acceptance because that is what will create real wanted change. I was recently talking with fellow life coach, Jenny Dildine, the LDS mission coach about this very idea. And I love how she explained it. She said that we need to have compassion for all of it, the whole experience. We are humans and we are meant to experience this opposition in life. We're going to operate from our higher brain sometimes and our lower brain sometimes. This is what we call the natural man or woman. However, what happens is we tend to view this natural man or woman as an enemy to God or something evil. It does say it in the scriptures, right? But the truth is the natural man or woman is necessary for survival and is actually part of God's plan. And then she shared this quote with me that I just love from Gerald Cazé, the presiding bishop in the presiding bishopric of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he says this, the purpose of our lives is not to disavow our natures, but to bring them into harmony with our spirits. Earth life is about aligning our natural man or woman with our divine self. It isn't about beating ourselves into submission. Jenny also mentioned something that I'd never thought of before. We're told to love our enemies. What would it be like for you if you could truly love the natural man or woman part of you? How could showing him or her more compassion actually help you bring you into harmony with your divine self? As we come to understand our two brains and how they work together, and then learn how to regulate our emotions and our behaviors and our thoughts, we can actually create a greater sense of balance and fulfillment in our lives. But it all begins by becoming a compassionate observer. Because being judgmental, critical, or unkind to ourselves will never create wanted change. Observation coupled with curiosity 
empowers us to embrace all of the human experience, the messiness of it, so that we can actually learn and grow and become aligned with our divine selves. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Have a wonderful, joyful week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. If you like what you hear, I would love it if you would share it with your friends and family and leave me a rating and review. If you'd like to learn more about what life coaching is, please schedule a free discovery call with me where we can work together through something that's causing you a problem. Just go to my website, seasons-coaching.com, and you can also find information about my Seasons of Joy one-on-one coaching program and my Seasons of Joy community. Have a joyful week and I'll see you next time.